Pledge of allegiance Pledge to, the flag. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Jesse. The, the notice requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act for this meeting have been met by transmitting the notice of the regular meeting to the commissioner's official newspaper on February 3rd, 2022 posting the notice where required and filing a copy of the notice with the commission clerk. The Deal Lake Commission meeting will be audio and videotaped and will be shown on APTV, Optimum 77, and throughout most of Monmouth County on Fios 30. Allenhurst, neither one is here. Asbury Park? Yes. Andrew Lakin? No? I think yes. Carol is on there. Oh, there's Carol. Uh, yeah, there I'm here. Uh, Lock Arbor? Here. Ocean? Here. I know Neptune and Alan Hurst and Deal aren't going to be here tonight. The first resolution we have is to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of February 17th, 2020. No second? <laughs> I'll second it. Was that? It's Margo. Margo. Thanks, Margo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. The next, tonight we have a treasurer's report. The balance on hand last month was $165,015.95. We had receipts of $12,733.34, disbursements of $2,885.33, grant disbursements of $5,952.83. For a total on deposit after uh, receipts and payments, 171, 799, 79. Someone please offer the bills to be paid. So moved. Second. I'll, I'll second it, Margo. What? Asbury Park? Yes. Interlaken? Yes. Luck Garber? Yes. Ocean? Yes. Okay. Take it away, Don. Okay. Um, 319 grant guys old business um peter any any updates on that with the uh rfp uh yeah we have the plans basically done for the rain garden we're working on the specs to put the final documents together ready to go out to bid um when they're ready i'll share them with you and steve and jack and we can okay. get um uh, authorization to go out to bid um thanks we'll be um, talking in next week or so on the on the tree, uh, the tree wells, because I'm not comfortable with all the locations, and we'll uh, discuss and review that and finalize it. Okay, and then be ready to go out to bid. Okay, thanks. Um, thanks. Good news on the payment. Uh, we should have our two hundred seventy-five thousand dollar check uh, within a week or so. So, according to my email, I got from the state. So it, it, that looks pretty good. So I just got that email when I was gone this week. And uh, you have anything to add, Jack, or? No. Okay. No. Nope. Not this time. NJIT, NJIT grant with the 319. Um, I haven't got any updates this month, but again, that's the, the blue-green algae eating machine, and they are doing a, a barometric study of, of the lake. Uh, we do not have that data yet. They will be sharing that data with us, and that'll be, and I'll discuss that a little later in new business too. Um, but let, let me keep rolling, okay? The ability crest hunt. We have an update on that. Uh, yes. Well, I talked to Peter Falvo, who's the attorney representing Amboy Bank, which is the owner of the of the um, project up there, and he has um, referred our information that we got from the Township of Ocean over to Michael Skay, who is the representative from Amboy Bank, and he has not yet heard back from him but I talked to him yesterday to see where we were going and he's, he's keeping it moving. Um, he also mentioned something else that's going up there, which you'll bring up later. I talked to you about it already uh, with a project that's coming up next to them, next to, next to uh, whatever the name that's of the project. A, yeah, that's, 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 that's in the year planning, planning, planning board process right now. I think, or maybe board of adjustment, not hundred percent sure, but we have, I sat in on one session. It's a, I think a six, Six story or four story senior citizen structure on the on the north nor, uh, the uh, 
the west side of Cedar Village entranceway. It's, it's big monstrosity. A lot of people are against it. Uh, they have a lot of challenges there at the location. And it's a direct feed right into Deal Lake, of course, between Nobility Crest and Cedar Village Lake. So um, they it's going to come right. It's going to come right across Cedar Village. Correct. Correct. The drainage is, or at least the, the way they're intending well, it. Yeah, they have to hold it in. They, the problem is they got to hold it in place. So that's that's a lot of water. Plus they have a pristine pond right in front of them, which they shouldn't be touching. So there's there's a lot of hurdles they got to jump through right now. So we'll see how that goes. But I'll, I'll update you guys next time I get what we need. Now, I might need down the road authority to you know bring Steve in uh, to do evaluation. I know Peter's guys are involved a little bit from the engineering side, but not not on the uh, planning board side. He doesn't have any input to that, I don't think. Uh, is that correct, Peter? Yes, that is. Okay. Um, okay, that's that. Thanks, Hunt. Any questions on that, by the way? Commissioner? Okay. Uh, shoreline protection, very interesting. We, we we have some action, believe it or not. It's, you know, besides our, our information brochures, um, I did get something back from Ocean, and uh, that, that problem we had in Ocean a while back, um, and I'm not going to specify the address right now, but the address, the uh, the state did file a, a violation notice. I, I think that was a call. Hold on. Let me get the correct terminology here. Um, notice of violation. That's the, the title of the document. Um, and I'm not sure how much I could share that, but I did get it from the the, 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 uh, the town today. So that was good news. So uh, it specifies certain information and I'm going to run that over by Pete and, and Steve in the next, for the next month. And we'll be able to give you some feedback on that. Uh, what it's basically what we've been saying. You can't, you can't build in a floodplain, right. Without, without a permit basically in the, in the right, right away. And they were right on the curve. They ripped out the old bulkhead and put a new bulkhead. In this case, it was, it was no bulkhead. So they ripped up the shoreline and put a bulkhead. in. So, okay. So Don, do they, but, is there any idea once they get a violation, then what's the remedy or what is the consequence? Funny you should say that. Um, it specifies they, they have they stopped immediately, right? It's done. You know, the damage is done. It's all con the construction is done. So, I mean, they can't really do more. Um, but I'm not sure the remediation, to be honest with you, or there's a fine. I, I don't know that answer yet. Yeah, that can vary from project to project. That's all in DP's, you know, prerogative as to what they require. It could be a fine. It could, in some cases, we've seen where they're actually required to remove what was put in and then restore it. Or they may be required to do some type of, you know, other type of mitigation. But that's all at DP's, uh, you know, that's DP's prerogative as to what they ask the property property owner to do right. If this letter came in the, the week it was happening, it would have been a hell of a lot more appropriate, I think. But it was, it was months ago. I, mean, I, can't, I can't even I can't even fathom how long. Ago. Well, how long ago was that, Jeannie? Six months ago. These pro this. I think it, it, was, it was over six months. Ago. Yeah. Which I'm not sure what what property it was. It was I'm not, I don't want you to say it, but yeah, I just it was a one of massive property. Um, well, one of massive. I'm not. Uh, it was actually <laughs> October 6, 2021. Okay. October 6. Anyway. Uh, anyway, that's good news. The state is doing uh, taking action, so it was great to see. Um, carp and goose remediation. Steve, I, I think we talked about we, we're not ready yet to get the, the permit, right? No. I mean, we should just, you know, we can hold off on it. Um, you know, we have to wait until after the spawning season. Sure, sure. sure. So there's no rush. No rush. On that. You're right. Uh, on the goose remediation, now we know, um, you know, we're, Messina is going to be starting to spread that material that we approved last year up to $2,000 in the selected areas in Asbury and Ocean. Asbury Ocean and Allenhurst were the, were the areas that approved it. The towns approved it. Any other towns would like it put down, they're more than welcome to jump in. Uh, but right now, that's the three towns we have, and he should start shortly on that. Um, in terms of you know the USDA, they'll be starting their shoreline checks. Uh, Asbury Park still not on board with that, um, but they did hire a new goose person, so hopefully we'll work, we can work that into the the program where. 
if people do find geese, maybe the new company will take care of it. We don't we don't know yet. Is that is yeah. that correct, Janie? I don't know what they we don't, don't know that they don't go on private property. Yeah, they won't. Yeah. Okay. You know, we, uh, since we taught those two, uh, number four and number five shoreline, um, you know, the three of us, uh, Dr. Souza, you and I are, need to get together to discuss our agenda to uh, ask EPA, the NJDEP rather, for a um, meeting. So we'll, we, we need to do that now that you're back, Don. And then in terms of the goose um, situation, um, well, first off, we should remind everybody that we're going to start to um, ask the commissioners to give those letters out as geese are reported um, and as the USDA sees them. You, everybody remembers what we did last year, right, where we handed out um, letters uh, for permission for the USDA to go on their properties. But then also, Don, you and I need to speak. So because we've been started that um, getting gathering that information um, about possibly having the DLA Commission um, do something as a, as the coordinating facility for all the town. Yeah, we, we got some. We don't have to do that right now. But yeah, that's that's the, the goal, right? That's, I'm just yeah, I'm just reminding you that we right, want and, and that's just to remind everybody that we found out that in every town. The only place they get they pay for is Deal Lake. I thought we well, we all thought that like Interlake and did the park and they only do they only pay for Deal Lake. So we're gonna have to talk some kind of structure for payments and all that. But it turns out we got a quote for all Deal Lake and it was just significantly cheaper than each town's bill when you add them up. Right. So we're we're thinking that you know we could save the town's money by us doing it and 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 then giving us maybe some extra money for that. So in addition to what they want to pay, that's what I think. Or we just use our current funds and do it. So that's a discussion, not for tonight, but for, you know, yeah. three, four months down the road. So. All right. Let me keep rolling, guys. Um, ship and sniff. We, 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 there's no current action on that. But just to clarify a couple of things. You know, we did get some hot spots. We're waiting for this for the summer to come back. We're going to do some retesting. And then revisit those hot spots with the individual towns sewer authority. So whoever that if it's, I know there's one in Lock Arbor. There's definitely one or two in, in Ocean Township, maybe three in Ocean Township, and I believe there's at least at least one in Interlake um, that we saw hot spots. So if you see them again, we're gonna we're gonna contact the borough's engineer and see which who's the responsible sewer authority, and we'll, we'll take it from there. But that's that's with the Clean Ocean Action folks. Um, Restoration of the lakes. Um, I haven't heard any updates on that. Peter, have you heard anything from Ocean Township on that? No, well, nor have I heard anything from Monmouth County. Okay. I'll talk to Greg and maybe we'll inquire. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Sure. Um, water testing. I think we have a, a, a workshop next next month, right, Jeannie? Yeah, 6.15 p.m. Dr. Adolph and Erin Conlin will be here to um do a presentation on, um, uh, I think I gave you the title of it. It's a long title, but on water testing, basically uh, they'll be talking about the results and they're focusing, the focus of the workshop will be on Deal Lake. Um, they're not gonna talk about the other lakes and, and basically what the, the, the testing results me mean um, and uh, how we, where we go from here now that we have what we have learned. Okay. And, learned. Yep. Okay. and I saw the I saw the marketing on the website already, so that's great. Um, we treatment. When is that again? What is, what the, is next the, meeting, uh, the next one is um uh, April twenty. What, our next meeting, April twenty first, uh, at six fifteen. That's great. Yeah. And I'm I'm advertising it all over. Yeah. And it's if, on it's on the website. It'll, it'll be on Facebook. And, and it'll be in the paper and on different boards in the towns. Yeah, that's right. It's going on the electronic board in Asbury and also Ocean Township, right, Jesse? And I'm going to ask Alan Hurst also. Great. Okay. okay. Um, we treatment. We got the, the RFPs out in the street, and we'll be getting yep. the, the bids back soon. And uh, and we'll do the evaluation, and, and we'll get back to the commissioners on what direction and what who's the low bidder, I guess, right? And if they're compliant. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, now, give us more than enough time to secure, you know, an applicator and then get the uh, treatments done as okay. per, you know, the schedule that we've set up. Gotcha. Thanks, Steve. Um, the new uh, new 319 grant submission, I, I like to thank everybody for, for doing the hard work, Steve, especially, and, 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 and and Jack and, 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 and Peter's guys, it's, uh, it was an outstanding presentation. I like to thank Asbury. Asbury came through, the mayor came through and actually read it. He did a great job reading it. And he picked up some, uh, some not errors, but enhancements that we could we could put in. And I was very happy with that. Um, and I want to thank Lock Arbor for being the first one in. The first one in. And I, I lost my mind when I was walking around Lake one day. I thought you hadn't submitted it. And I called Margo in a panic. I said, oh, my Lordy, I don't think we got your letter. So eventually we did find it, but we did find out that we hadn't submitted it. So we ended up finding it and submitting it. So everybody got submitted. Uh, it, was a, it was a wonderful presentation. Um, a, lot of, a lot of, all the commitment letters, and we also have um, support letters from many, many people, congressmen, senators, um, dog walkers. We got everybody, everybody, everybody submitted support letters. So it was very nice to see. Uh, yeah, I mean, so just quickly, so everybody remembers, I mean, this is for grant money to continue with the type of projects that are being implemented right now with the current 319. So this would be to collect and treat stormwater before it hits the lake, remove pollutants, whether it's sediment, pathogens, nutrients, et cetera. So it's just, you know, basically the same type of effort. And then with that, also the floating wetland islands, which are analogous to a big sponge that soaks up nutrients and uh, other pollutants right out of the water. So keep your fingers crossed. Uh, you know, it's going to be a lot of, of uh, competition for the funding, but um, I think we have a pretty good package that we put together. No doubt. Yeah. The um, What was really exciting about it, we used zoom to do a little prep preparation and we're able to go online and, and, and with with google earth and actually look at the sites we wanted to, to deal with uh, in coordination with the other commission so it really was it was really much simpler than the last time when we didn't have a zoom in 2017 so uh, it, was, it was it was a great great effort so thanks thanks a lot to the team um cleanup number 11 which we missed oh sorry um, Cleanup April second. So uh, all, all hands on deck. We're going to get some advertising out for that, and um, and we already got some folks volunteering. We have actually have a, a group, the Surf Riders. I don't know if you saw that email. Surf Riders are going to do a, a cleanup in July. I don't have the date in front of me. Uh, we'll we'll tell you. I think it's July seventh. But they're going to have their own cleanup on Deal Lake, which I thought was pretty exciting. Um, and then we have some other groups coming in on that date also to help out. And uh, now we're into new business. So any, any old business that I, I forgot? Okay. Oh, just that you were speaking, said you were gonna speak later about yep. the um, barometric readings. Yep. Yep. Um, yep. Okay. So here it goes. Tree destruction on Asbury Park Circle. I, I, I personally have not seen it yet, uh, but I heard they, I think they cut every, every big tree down. Is that correct? I went by. I went by the other day, and I, I just was appalled. I, I like it was bad enough when they cut them down before, but now to come back and take most of the remaining ones, what is that about? If I don't know, if Melanie, it, it you, wasn't. You think, it wasn't everyone, but it was oh, a lot. Not. Not. I said just about everyone. Yeah. There's it, about yeah. It was. It was not good. Does but, anybody want to take the lead on writing, a, a, starting, a, drafting a letter up uh, to the state DOT on that? Or maybe Senator Vigopal, a short letter and, and of our, you know. This wasn't a function that they were rash and they were, you know, uh, impacted by the emerald ash borer or anything like that. No, nah, there's not, there's somebody wants to cut somebody in the DOT wants to cut every tree down along the highway. That's really what it is. Well, it was the DOT, right? For sure. Oh, well, without a doubt, it's DOT. Without okay, a doubt. But we don't know why they cut them down, do we? They don't like trees. They don't. They're, 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 their statement last time was, we're cutting them down because we don't want to hit cars. And, and most of these trees were far away. Yeah, you know, last time they, they cut the ones that were closer to the road. This one, these were 
in the middle of the of the area. So I'm not sure what they're thinking. Whose whose actual property is that? Ocean Neptune. State. I think the state owns it. I believe that little patch in the middle there. They own all that and the roadways. Yeah. Yeah, because it might be an ocean. That. It might be a Neptune. Uh, and I don't know where that DM, DMZ is, but you know, there's they own that land. They yeah, it is it. DOT property because we've looked at that before as a possible basin location. Yeah. You know, so. Well. So how, how would anybody find out what, how, why they're cutting the trees down? Well, I think we just sent a letter of, 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 of a complaint, complaint letter to state that they're wiping out trees and, and a, you know, we're trying to you know, keep the earth green and trying to you know, cut down blue, you know, the, the um, what do you call it? The, um, Reduce the runoff for one thing. Well, yeah, not yeah. only runoff, but you know, it's, it's the whole, whole environment issue where everybody's trying to plant trees and here's the state cutting down perfectly good trees. So Old unless property. they're building a new highway, which they're not. Um, they are planting some new trees there. They planted but, trees. I don't think they're planting any more trees. Are they planting trees? Well, there were there was somebody there the other day with some small trees. I, I don't know if they're starting already, but they no, had small they had, trees. After the last time we complained, we did complain one time, got it on in the Asbury Park Press, and we did get some action. They stopped, and they actually planted trees. But now... We, I think we need to do it again. So uh, you, know, you guys can talk, talk to your, you know, think about it. Send me an email if you, you would like to help out and, and, and draft something up. Okay. I'll I have something else. Uh, Don, I have something else I wanted to um, ask the group. Sure. Um, uh, apparently <clears throat> I was talking to uh, one of the town officials of a, a neighboring municipality and um, there is a um, JCPNL project to extend um, electrical wires and poles and some very, very large sort of ballast type poles in the works right now. <clears throat> and uh, a presentation was made to a couple of communities that are affected, uh, you know, that are on the work map and um, no printed material was given to them. And for the past couple of weeks, I've been trying to get access to that to find out uh, the locations of the work with respect to each of our municipalities and, and how they relate to the lake. And we haven't been able to get that information. So I was kind of hoping maybe Eric would be on tonight and I could ask him, he might have a little more information on something like that. Um, but it might be something we might want to follow up on. I, I have a little bit. We, we, I was talking to Alan Hurst for a while. It all popped up with the Corley's Avenue project uh -huh. on, on discussions here. Yeah. And, uh, it came out that JCPNL was in discussions with Allenhurst, putting these giant poles up, and um, and they're going right down Corley's Avenue. It's the main line going from right uh, Whitesville and Asbury, comes down Wickapeka all the way to Wick to uh, Corley's Avenue, and goes up Corley's Avenue. So they're in the midst. They've been cutting trees down for the last three or four years along that path. Now they want to replace the wooden poles with metal poles or a composite pole, and, and that's where they're at. Some, some of the larger poles are about four feet in diameter at the base. Um, they're trying to get them smaller to comply. Alan Hurst said no go. They're not they're not allowing the right away or something like that. So they're and, and they've been trying to they've been trying to get um, you know written copies of that information that was presented, but we've so far been able to kind of not get that. I got you. Um, there's if you look at the if you look at the Corley's Avenue, we're going to talk about the Corley's Avenue Bridge in, in a minute. Um, but you'll see markers if you walk the path there on on the, on the on the south side. You'll see marks in the ground where they plan, I think, to put the poles. Um, and they didn't really move them far from the bridge, which didn't make any sense because they're they're redoing the bridge and construction of the bridge can be a lot easier if the poles were in a different location. But anyway, that's that. Um, but thanks, Carol, for bringing that up. Okay. That's, that's something we should keep our eye on. I don't know if it really affects the lake per se. Um, I've I've just been trying to get a copy of the work map because apparently one was originally presented um, by a like Zoom meeting, but no um, hard copy has ever, right. despite re a request, been. Okay. Well, there, there is a meeting scheduled for March twenty uh -huh. March twenty ninth from six to eight p.m. on Zoom. I, I'm not sure. I, I I'm going to ask if this I can put this on our website, uh, but it's on for the Corley's Avenue Bridge, oh, and okay. that's going to be. 
uh, six like uh, March 29th, Tuesday. And, and that's that's get copyright. They might be talking about the polls of that meeting. Um, okay. Where's the meeting, John? The virtual. No, where? I virtual. Mean, which town, though? No. Virtual. It's the county. It's the county. It's the county, oh, oh. county yep. road department, county, state. And They're hosting it. The county is hosting it. County is hosting it. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's a county county document. I got I got it in the mail because I'm a resident and I'm also a stakeholder with DLA Commission. So they we had asked for certain things. If you remember, we asked for a wider opening so we get barges in there. We do dredging um, and, and minimize impact on the lake. So. That was that's all being planned, and they're doing a good job planning it. I never, I haven't seen the, the 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 preliminary designs, but they got all the concepts they wanted, and I think this meeting they're going to actually present the plans. I believe. Maybe I'll drop you off a copy of the letter because I got one also. Did you get one? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it has all the information on it. I'll drop I, it at I, your house. I assume it's public, and we could. It's probably on the website, the Corley's Avenue website, which I think is on our website. So you can click that and get the, the, the proper information. Um, let me go back. Um, there was an email from Jack on the, on the HAB meeting. We got you know, the $10 million grant, or $10 million that were allocated to uh, the lakes for HAB restorations and, and also um, putting a lake person on the DEP um, team. It'll be a, a one, one belly button for, for lakes. And that's, 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 that was approved. And the meeting's happening when, Jack? Uh, the HAB Summit is going to be March 23rd, so next Wednesday. Yeah, that's, yeah. I, I don't think everybody was invited. There's, I think the invites went out to some of the engineers and the lake commissioners, I, I believe, the chairman. Right. The point stands is that that's probably when the announcement is going to be discussed or announced, or, you know, the RFP for that. So, I mean, it's something that we should be thinking about now, Steve, as Steve mentioned in his response email, you know, kind of right. there, there's some he's got some good steps to, to what we should be keeping in mind moving forward. Well, maybe after we you want, I guess we can wait after the meeting or what do you want to do? Yeah, I, I might defer to Steve on that one in because we don't know really what the priorities are yet. It's probably going to be like another Habs grant situation, but yeah. uh, you know, there's more intricacies to it than that. Right, I think the first thing we have to figure out is what, like I said in my email today, what are they willing to fund? And then yeah. once we know what they are interested in funding, then develop a proposal that, you know, speaks to what they want to fund, you know? Right, but, right. Well, in, in discussions that I've had with the, grant manager for the Habs grant I have uh, up at Greenwood, we were discussing, you know, what should go with 319, what should go with the lake management, lake restoration funds. And he couldn't specifically tell me what would be good, but green infrastructure, BMPs, anything in the watershed, he said, that's a good idea for 319. Anything that's treating water quality directly in the water itself, like something like nutrient um, inactivation, anything. That know, charcoal as, system you were talking about? Biochar, Utrazorb yeah. is another one that, you know, we're, we're looking into. All, there's, there's a number of different types of technologies out there now. Um, things like um, weed treatments might count. I don't, they're like more like maintenance activities as opposed to preventative green infrastructure. That's the, that's, again, he couldn't tell me directly, but he said, you know, right. you're on the right track if that's the way you're thinking. I said, okay. okay. We'll, we'll do a Zoom meeting after, after we, on the 23rd, work it. Okay. Um, I had two, we had two, two, re, two responses to our, our comment section of the website from Mr. Uh, Mr. Greibel, Rich Greibel, um, in Colonial Terrace about, it's something we had brought up before, I brought up before, uh, years ago, and uh, maybe other people have brought up, and Steve answered them. It was about these floating masses of black muck floating up from the, the lake bottom. Uh, Steve, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's basically this happens every year, and as the water warms up, there's more bacterial decomposition at the bottom of the lake, and then as a result, you end up with these mats of organic material that begin to surface because of you know, gases that get trapped because of all the bacterial decomposition. 
and that material is going to like you know dissipate it'll break up the bacteria will break it down further or it's going to settle out but it's a it's pretty natural common occurrence in all lakes it's not something that's indicative of a problem or right. pollution or anything like that yeah. it, it also is a time when these massive logs get dislodged from the ground yeah. and start floating to, <laughs> it, it's a man i never saw anything like it every year you get new log formations at the flume and they, you see them floating down along the path and through the railroad tracks and out so uh, it's right around this time okay thanks steve um and thanks for that comment, Rich. And, and, and we have another one from, from, um, from Jim. Uh, I, I want to say Veach. Uh, Vec, Vec, Veach, 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 is, Veach is right. Veach, okay. Thank, and, and thank you for your comment. Um, we, 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 we do have a lot of information on, on the depth. We're getting more information on the depth. We pretty much know the low spots in the lake. And, and that's from a lot of drone video we got, personal knowledge we have. Um, and, and where the inflows are, right? Um, we still have obviously Colonial Terrace problem, the water coming in from Seaview. We have the Harvey Brook situation from Middlebrook. So we, we know the two big ones, right? And, and we're, we're cutting down on all the sediment as best we can with the storm, uh, the treatment boxes we're putting in. So we're making, we're making great strides, but you know we could always do more. And that's what these 319 grants are all about. So uh, all the things we've been doing are, are, are all in direction to removing those, those sediment problems um and that's the best way to say it. but we, we can get more on that down the road um and thanks for your comment and uh and, and well, I, just that, wanted, yeah. I just wanted to add that uh, uh first of all i want to compliment uh, uh you and uh, steve and peter and jack for your excellent article in the lake lines uh but the comment that, that dr souza had in, or mr Sousa, dr Sousa, Yep. Um, had in the article about the mean depth of the lake as 5.3 feet. Um, what, I, what I'm concerned about is we don't have a base measurement for sedimentation. We know that stuff is coming in now from Cedar Village and you know all these mm -hmm. points. Right. We know sediment's flowing into the lake. Mm -hmm. And anecdotally, I can tell you as a 20 year lake resident, uh, my wife loves to row a little tiny rowboat little Sears game fisher around the lake. We used to be able to row almost up Wekapeko yep. from one Amasa point. Yeah. Then it was 30, 30 yards and then 20 yards and then 10 yards. We didn't even try it anymore. We hit the mud. Yep. And I see the I see the people with their little um motorboats and now houseboats coming up and down the lake. They are leaving um about a yard wide band of muck that they're kicking up. I never saw that before. Now I'm seeing it. Yeah. I I think that we we could look at the isolated hot spots and we could say, oh well, there's a hot spot and there's a depth problem. But unless we have a base, we don't know whether the lake is fill at what rate it's filling in. We don't no. know where it's filling in. Yeah. And we don't know where it's going to be in five years or 10 years or 20 years. We need this base information for our 319 grants. Well, we actually we, just we actually have a lot of that. Hey Jim. And I don't we, think anecdotally handling it is handling it. Yeah, hey Jim. We actually do have baseline information actually from the 40s. And we actually have more, I believe, in the 60s. So the lake was dredged in the 50s, early 50s. And it was dredged, uh, as I remember, it was probably six to eight feet in the back sections. And the, all the sediment was pumped out to the ocean. So that's the beginning, right? And that was done in the early 50s. And from then on, it started filling in. And obviously in the 70s, mid 70s, is when the major damage was done. Um, now we have the sediment, we have sediment coming from leaves, from road, 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 road material. Right. I see it in my section over in West Islanders. It, it's definitely going up. It's not, it's gradual, but it's definitely going up across the lake. Eventually we need a complete dredging. Maybe some of this, we, you know, money we have for restoration of, of of the infrastructure. Maybe that would help. Maybe we can get some of that. So that we're gonna be we're gonna be looking at all that. But you know, the the, the barometric study we get from from NJIT will be a great baseline of yeah, that you're talking about. So I'll, I'll keep you in line and, and give you get a copy of that as soon as we get it. Okay. Actually, it'll go up on the website, so everybody will have a copy of that. 
All right. but John, could you explain that? I don't understand the difference between a parametric reading and a bathymetric. Maybe Dr. Um, Souza, what, what is a bathymetric? No, it's bathymetric. The correct term is bathymetric. Thank so it's just, a, it's just an underwater um, survey of the, right. you know, okay. the lake bottom that measures water depth and, and depth of accumulated sediment. And, you know, we have data that's even more recent than that. Peter, you know, developed a, a whole ton of data for the, you know, for the easternmost section of the lake. We have data that was developed in the 90s for uh, Hollow Brook and Harvey Brook and for Colonial Terrace sections. And we do have data that uh, we've used, you know, modeling data that we know like on, on a annual basis, the tons of sediment that is entering the lake. And so, you know, the sources, the major sources, where the sediment's coming from, where it needs to be managed the most, et cetera. Um, so we do have some of that baseline data. Right, some thanks. of those need to be updated, but, you know, you know, we have some of those pieces in place. Thanks, Steve. I'm gonna keep the meeting rolling, guys, but thank you, Jim, for that comment. Um, Poster contest. We have another post student poster contest, and uh, I got the information that Jeannie's going to get the information. Asbury, I'm going to get the information. Ocean, and uh, we'll get some of the information, and, we'll, and maybe Neptune High School. And, I'll get uh, it out to Neptune also. Okay, great, great. Yeah. Um, camera on the flume. We're, I, I want to thank Ken for for gathering that information. I, I have to give get Ken some information on the, the uh, Verizon system. We have to change a chip. Uh, within our box, but we're going to be able to get cameras, viewing cameras from the flume, hopefully next month. So that's exciting. We'll see how fast Verizon get me the information. But thanks, Ken, for following up on that. Um, and I think that's all the new business I have. Any I other one other thing, Don? Sure. I you know I sent out a notice to you and Jeannie, but I'll make a mention to all the other commissioners. Uh, Anjek is making. Uh, they're calling for proposals right now for their. This is the New Jersey Association of Environmental Commissions. They're making. Uh, they're relatively small grants, but they do have grants that are available. So if you go on the Anjek website. Uh, or if you want to email me, I'll put you, you know, I'll, I'll send you the link. But um, they're, they've got a call for proposals out, and this is for environmental commissions only. Okay, so if oh, wow. your municipality has an environmental commission, you can apply for one of these grants, and it covers a variety of things. Could even be like shoreline plantings, um, a whole bunch of different things. Uh, okay. So, you know, if you want more information on it, either go to the ANJEC website or email me and I'll, I'll send you the link. Okay. If, uh, would the Shade Tree Commissions be someone that is an entity that they would approve a grant for? Uh, probably not. I think no. it's specific only to environmental commissions. Peter, do you know? I, I think the answer is no, except in Asbury Park, where it's, I believe, a combined environmental shade tree commission. Correct. Right. Yeah. Or, we, can't, we can't comply, correct? No. Right. Okay. Nope. Got it. Got it. It's going to be a municipal, a municipal EC. All right. So maybe we get a hey, Steve. Can you send? Did you send that to me already? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll find. I haven't checked all my two hundred emails. So I sent it. <laughs> I sent it to Tom Pavinsky as soon as Steve sent it to me. I sent it to him. Did you, you can post Steve, it? You can post it on the uh, Deal Lake website as yeah. well. Did you send it, Steve? Did you send it to all the commissioners? Just me. No, I only sent it to you and Jeannie. Okay, I'll send it out to all the other commissioners. They can pass it on to their environmental commissions. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, let's, I wanna go through commissioner's last word. Um, so I'm gonna start with Margo. Hi, uh, uh, Clean Ocean Action Beach Sweep is the following Saturday after the Deal Lake one on um, April 9th, 9 to 1230. Okay. Um, and um, we are, Thinking of getting, we're talking about getting a, a shade tree um, commit co um, committee in our town because we're noticing that everyone, when they buy a house, cuts down all the trees and uh, trying to educate people on how they help, uh, you know, with um, absorbing the water and the pollution. And we're looking forward to getting the brochures, which Melanie will pick up hopefully tomorrow. She was saying from Jeannie. 
and putting those at our Burl Hall. And um, what else? Um, just, you know, starting to think about um, more residents coming down for the summer and trying to get everyone on board with uh, understanding what you do at your house affects the lake and the ocean. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Carol? Uh, I'm going to continue to keep following up on the JCPL network and just try to, you know, make sure that, you know, there's nothing that's going to be a detriment to the lake or lakeshore property. Um, and I'll be seeing everybody at the lake cleanup in Interlaken. Uh, I'll be at my usual spot right on the curb on Interlaken Drive. <laughs> okay, thanks. Jeannie? Well, you know, since we began to distribute the brochures to the lakefront property owners, there's been um, my, the feedback I've been getting is, wouldn't it be good if we were to start to develop some other kind of educational pamphlet for the people that aren't just lakefront? And, and Margo saying that about trees, um, that in itself, um, you know, we all see this. People move in, they cut down the trees. I don't, I don't know what could happen with my neighbor just said, I hate trees, <laughs> you know, with no kind of sense for what's happening to the entire neighborhood. When she cut down this, um, it was almost a hundred foot tree. She cut two of them down. I don't know if it needs to be the focus is in trees, but I, I do think that, um, you know, these, these kind of things, um, you know, this is something that the deal Lake commission can do to help the lake is uh, inform the public in this way. So maybe we could think about, that I, I would be willing to develop something else for not specifically geared toward lakefront homeowners, but something that we could decide on would be useful information for um, everybody in the towns in terms of um, what would help the lake. All right, that's, that's great. Oh, I, I think the trees will have to keep, I love trees too, and we can help the environmental commissions and tree commissions, tree shade tree commissions. To do to help the, to help them maybe to get their information out, but really they're that that's their responsibility. Right. And I'm well, going to try to. We got enough responsibility right now, so yeah, my gut feeling is, and I'm, I love trees. I have the same problem. Oceans changing their tree ordinance soon, um, and we've been I've been involved with that. So I ask all the commissioners get involved with trade shade tree commission, start a trade shade tree commission. And work the trees separately with their own communities. I don't think that specifically talking about trees. I was just saying as an example that that's something that happens. Yeah. But what I was thinking about was the from the feedback I've been getting from other people saying, this, "Why don't you do this for people that aren't lakefront? What what would be thing? What are some things that they should be aware of that would help the lake?" Well, I think the I think the brochure we have right now is excellent. So mm -hmm. even, that could even be used for non lakeshore people and, and get education. And our website's very educational. So anyway, we'll we'll continue to talk that. Let's move on to the public session. Um, Jesse, A motion to open the meeting to the public. I'll offer. No, we'll... Second. I'll second it. All in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Okay. I see Pat on there. Any any comments from Pat? Unmuting myself. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm just here to um, you know, I I I just like to attend and I like to hear all the things that are going on. I I applaud all the work that you do. I will say that the black plastic is still there across uh <laughs> across the way, an unsightly um you have those contacts for ocean correct you know nothing ever happens the tree is still there it's but, but i you, don't but do you have the you still have the contact information i gave you right so you mean you mean the people from uh ocean township from ocean yes smith i think his name was yeah i mean i i, I can contact him again but yeah, the, the town manager is really the key i mean if you don't you don't have his contact just email me i'll give it to you all right, I'll try. I'll try that again. Okay. But you know, again, I, 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 I second Mr. Veach because because his wife is trying to come in her little rowboat down where we live, and I appreciate that she cannot come down there because a lot of that silt came from the place across the water, and it, it. and it's 
not only was it silt, but it was filled with gasoline. So uh, um, it's a shame. It that was reported that, that was reported to DEP too, by the way. <laughs> yeah, and there you it know. sits. Right. So uh, thanks, thanks, Pat. Um, Bob, what's up? Hold on. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hey, sorry about that. Um, hey, everybody. Just, um, you know, the Ospreys are coming back. Uh, we we saw them yesterday. If you, if you looked up and listened, they were circling around, so it was really neat. Um, there, last year, we had that problem, if you recall, at JCP&L at, at the building there. They, they knocked down an Osprey nest. Yeah. And I think the Ospreys came, like, right after and put it back up. But um, we we have a contact with a group, with a volunteer group that's looking to build some osprey sites on the net, on the lake. Um, and just wondering, Don, or anybody, if you, if you have some thoughts, I you know, don't just go do that, of course. Who would we talk to about getting permission or guidance on, you know, is it even is it even necessary? You know, we don't want to have too many nests out there, but any thoughts on that? I guess each town would... I yeah, each town would have their own public area you can maybe do. I know Police Station Ocean built one in back of their police station to keep the Ospreys off their their radio okay. antenna. Um, so, you know, I would I would partition each town. Uh, the Colonial Terrace Golf Course would be a great spot, right? Yeah, there's no, there's nothing over there, right? Most of the nests are over towards Allenhurst, Interlake. Right, right, right. And and I seem to have got up on the telephone on the uh, light posts. I know, I know. And nobody seems to bother them. I mean, the public or the uh, the board of education don't seem to mind. So, so you're thinking the um, township manager of each town is that what you're thinking? Well, in in Asbury Park's case, that would be the board of education, right? If you wanted to put one over there, yeah, that has nothing to do with the town. The town will tell you to go to board. So that's one one idea. That's a big landmass, right? The other one is the sewer authority and Ocean Town. Yeah, the Ocean Town Sewer Authority in Interlaken. Yeah, they oh, yeah. got their building. They're they're going to be redoing. They may want to do it now, but maybe down the road, they would want to do it uh, on their property to prevent to maybe get them away from the the electric lines uh, because the electric lines go right to the sewer plant, um, sewer pumping station. So that, maybe that's a thought. Right here. Yeah. So okay. That's that's my two cents. Okay. But thanks. Thanks for the observation. Yeah, I did get an email from my. Buddy Steve Harvey on that, that the Ospreys were back. So that was, that was great news. Thanks. Okay. Bob, are you going to be doing any uh, trips coming up soon or not? <laughs> yeah, we just start thinking about that, Jeannie. Um, nothing scheduled, but we're definitely planning on, a, you know, three or four uh, paddles this year. Okay. Um, that's great. Yep. Yeah, late okay. May will be the first one. Okay. Thanks a lot. Uh, I see yeah. three, five, zero. You're on for three, three minutes. Go ahead. <clears throat> Ernest Mignoli, 710 Northeast 7th Street, Boynton Beach, oh. Florida. Uh, my voice sounds different because I lived in the Santander building on the Deal Lake for 14 years, and a lot of us got pollution related cancer. I got throat cancer, but I survived. I was supposed to lose my whole throat, but they saved it. So I don't sound like Ernest Mignoli that you're used to, but I'm in total remission, and uh, Memorial Sloan saved my life. So. So now I live in Florida. It's a lot cleaner here, and uh, it's a lot easier to work with the municipalities on pollution and stuff like that. Because my opinion is that the only thing that's going to save Monmouth County and the lakes is another Operation Bid Rig. And you can Google that when you go home and see all the municipal criminals that got caught up in that and how all the high-density developers were destroying the city, polluting everything, destroying the infrastructure ruining the lakes and yet and yet they're all back out still doing it most of them went to prison for about five or six years and now that they're out their kids are back in the business their neighbors their friends and that's why when you look at Takanasi lake and long branch and you look at uh, uh deal lake and you look at sunset lake and wesley lake what ocean neptune allen hurst long branch what the municipalities are doing to those lakes they're destroying them. And I was planning on buying a part-time house back in Asbury or Long Branch. I can't live in that polluted stuff. I like to fish. You can't eat the fish out of the ocean. You can't eat the fish in the lakes. Why live there? To get cancer again? 
And New Jersey is the most polluted in the country, the most high dense in the country, and the most Superfund sites. And you know where some of the worst Superfund sites are? In oh. Wall Township. In Wall Township that feeds all the waterways of the lake, Steel Lake and all that. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, Wall Township. Read about the Superfund sites there. And read about who covers it all up for you. Laura Linsky and Chris Gramagione, the former prosecutors, just like they cover up all the crime in the schools. And now, just so you know, the municipal prosecutor in Asbury, James N. Butler, is now under investigation for tampering with cases in Neptune. And the reason that's good is because every time you sign complaints against the city for polluting or buildings that are polluting, James N. Butler would shoot it down in the municipal court. He's famous for that. The developers they love copy him. Zoom meeting. Excuse me? Go who, on. Is, who is that interrupting me? Who is that? Go on. Yeah. And I'm glad, Mr. Hadling, you got unelected. I'll tell you, I helped. And uh, for your running mate, Downey, and I was working on Gopal, but we came up a little bit short. So there you go. All and right, you're responsible you. for a lot of pollution, Mr. Howdling. Thank you, Ernie. Just, look at, just look at the records. Goodbye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Anybody else? Okay. Let's close the oh, public session. A motion, a, motion to a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? A motion to adjourn the meeting. I see Carol. I, I give you that. I give you the motion to I'll I offer. give you the motion to adjourn. Second. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.